Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here and welcome to another episode of Aaron's Art Tips, number 13. Okay, everybody, so today I want to talk to you about um, creature design because I like to do a lot of that kind of stuff. I've done it for other films that I've worked on. And um, a lot of things that I see uh, people just starting out doing is not doing enough research. So what I want to talk about today is, is grounding your creature designs in reality. One of the things I like to, to think about is that even if something is evolving on another planet or something like that, we're all kind of slave to the same forces, whether it's gravity or or living in a wet environment or whatever, that are going to kind of shape and mold our evolution. So there's going to be a lot of similarities. And so I always recommend doing your research, look at what's evolved beforehand before you start to create your own creatures. But before that, I want to cover a couple of things. First of all, I want to... Um, I want to give a shout out to a friend of mine who's just created an amazing... Uh, kind of supplemental book for animation. It's a great resource for getting ideas for drawing, posing, uh, uh, storyboarding, that sort of thing. It's the, um, it's the Pose Drawing Spark book. And uh, I, I really recommend you go check it out. Um, this is a guy that uh, we kind of met during our Kickstarter campaigns and we kind of cross-pollinated a little bit. And I really, really, I love I loved the book. I, I ordered the book myself. Um, it's, uh, done by Cedric Honstadt and, uh, go check out his, uh, his website. It's right here. And, um, and just check out the book. I, I really recommend it. It's, uh, you know, it's a relatively small amount of money to pay for some of the great ideas that are in there. Um, next, obviously I always got to give a shout out to my friends over at Wacom. Please check out their website, W-A-O-C-O-M.com. And, uh, and check out their products. I've been using them for years now, and I love them. Also, big deal, my website, creatureartteacher.com, is completely going through a facelift. You can see it now, and uh, some changes have already happened. Um, uh, once again, it's creatureartteacher.com. Uh, you, there you're going to find uh, tutorials on Photoshop, painting, drawing, illustration, all kinds of different things, animation. And, um, and over the coming months, we're going to be kind of increasing the amount of stuff that, uh, that you'll be able to get, including entire downloadable courses in animation and uh, drawing and painting and that sort of thing. So anyway, so let's get back to why we're here. And I'm going to brush off the dust on my computer. Um, and that is, um, let's just talk about creature design and grounding it in reality. Um, I'm just going to pull up some examples of some of the things that I've done in the past. Um, there was a while back that I was creating these creatures uh, for a story that we were doing. And there are these creatures that lived in the forest. Now, the premise, the idea is that they've lived in the forest for years and years and we've never seen them. There's a lot of mythical creatures that we have like that, with whether they be elves or imps or fairies or whatever. But we wanted to base this in reality. What if they were really there? Like we could walk out of our door right now and if we just knew how to find them, we could find them. How in the heck would they have evolved? And so that was the, from for me as, a, uh, as the designer and coming up with some of these ideas, I started thinking about, okay, well, there's creatures out there now that live in those same circumstances, and I started drawing ideas for them. I'm going to pull over a couple right now. In particular, I started looking at um, mimicry and camouflage in different insects, um, and I was fascinated by the variety. Now, I've, I've always kind of, you know, growing up, sorry, I'm it's kind of slow. My mouse isn't working very well. Um, I've always been fascinated by these creatures. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, and I'm sure we all did, we caught uh, walking sticks and, and praying mantis and leaf insects. But some of these just really uh, floored me. Um, you know, this Katie did here. It's amazing how nature 
through evolution has created these creatures that can so mimic something that is well it's just amazing to me and then so i look at these i look at these leaf insects and go you know what if i was walking in the forest i would never ever see them so then i started to apply these ideas after doing this research i did a ton more research than this but i started applying these ideas to some of these creatures that i started to design now we have these leaf fairy creatures that i started looking at mantis insects and if you look at this um this image in particular, you can see that you kind of have to, you got to take a double take to actually see the stick insect in there. And that was a really big inspiration for me in creating this image right here of these leaf fairies. Now I'm going to blow this up. And now you can see, you can see the inspiration that I got. I went out and I, I went to some uh, gardens and I photographed the gardens and I decided, you know, what, I want this to be real. So I, I just let the photograph, the photograph of the flowers be real. And I painted these insects, insects, I painted these fairies into the scene, but I wanted them to have kind of a, a real world feel like they kind of evolved alongside insects. And so I gave them the, these mimicry traits where they could blend right in to their background and you may never see them. And, uh, but I gave them kind of the forward facing eyes, hands, and that sort of thing that would make them familiar to us and kind of bridge that gap. Okay. So that was that one. So we started thinking a little bit more about some of these other creatures, these, these insects here. And we thought, okay, well, what if there was kind of a humanoid type, a small creature, elf-like, let's say, and may, what if they could grow kind of mimic leaves off their skin, just like, like a bird grows feathers. And they could control those, those leaves or feathers and fluff them out and turn into a bush and you would walk right past them. So I started coming up with some different ideas and these are some of the ones that I, I came out with. This was an image of, um, I'll blow that up there. Um, this was a, a little shot in my front yard and I went outside, took the photograph and then I photographed all these different leaves and stuff in different positions and then started painting this elf into the background, but gave her the spots, all the different camouflage, the leaves growing off of her head instead of hair that would allow her to blend into her background. And once we once we landed on this uh, conceit, this this thing that was grounded in reality, the, the ideas really started flowing out. Um, this was an earlier one um, that... Uh, this was the idea that this, before we actually came up with the idea that everything would grow off of them, we had the idea that, okay, they were green and they had all these markings that, like frogs that helped them blend in, but maybe they, they took different uh, grasses and flowers and things like that and kind of adorned themselves and they could blend in even more. And so that's how this one evolved. And so that was kind of fun. And then, um, and here was another one that where they were, uh, the leaves and everything are growing right off of uh, her skin. This is big eyes for obvious reasons, but you could see how the skin just starts to develop into these leaf like uh, uh, growths and, and whatever, but we still wanted to have a bit of an appeal there. So that was a lot of fun. And then ultimately there's another creature. Now this one we felt was probably a little bit too, uh, creature like he didn't have the the fun the life in his eyes but I kind of liked this one and this is another one where the leaves are growing right off of them and I wanted him to have a real kind of native feel so I looked at a, a lot of at native people of like say New Guinea and Central Africa and just the way they stood and the way they were such a part of their environment and I tried to capture that and put that into this little creature that that kind of grew up in the in the kind of the same kind of conditions that as maybe some of those people did. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing from reality. I'm I'm taking what's been out there. I've done my research and I'm applying them to my designs. And that's what I think is so important for people designing creatures, designing whatever for a film. Understand where that creature has come from. How has it evolved? And put all that work into the beginning because in the end you'll come up with something that has a lot more grounding in reality. And it's, it'll be a lot more believable. And it's research that you can carry into other aspects of your illustration later down the road. You're building up that visual library that I always talk about. Here's one that I did yesterday. So I, I sat down yesterday and 
I sat at my drawing board. I didn't have anything to do, but I felt like drawing, just like I did when I was five years old and I pick up a piece of paper. Yesterday, I sat down on my Cintiq and I said, okay, I want to draw something. I think I'm going to make up a creature. Well, rather than just make something up, I started looking at some of my images that I had shot while I was overseas a couple of years ago. In particular, I was um, we were tracking rhinos on elephant back in southern Nepal. And I got some really cool photos of rhinos. And here's one uh, in particular that I can bring over. And I got really inspired by, you know, this mother and calf and, and the horn. And, and just I'm, I'm always fascinated by the, the variety of, of evolutionary traits that we have on planet Earth. Whether, you know, you can look at something from a jellyfish to us and everything in between. And the, the variety is just incredible through insects and everything else. And and. And so I started looking at just how, how would I apply my own thing? I could, I could grab all these different traits from different um, animals around the world and I could create my own creature, but I wanted it to be grounded in reality. So I started thinking about, okay, these rhinos, and I was looking at the horn and the shape of the head and that body armor, and, and they, they kind of live in this wet, marshy environment and how they've evolved kind of this tank kind of, feel to plow through grasses and and shrubs and that sort of thing but i also started thinking about okay what if this animal uh also had some traits of let's say an ostrich and you know longer legs to get up above the grass a little bit and i just started playing with some of these different ideas and i started sketching and so this was a sketch that i came up with and uh, it was very quick um but I start, you know, I was thinking about the horn on the nose and the head shape for the rhino and, and some of that. But I wanted to, you know, as far as locomotion goes, anything can happen. And there's a lot of different uh, varieties of locomotion that have evolved on Earth. And so I thought, okay, what about a six-legged creature that he's evolved back to four-legged, but he still has those front arms that he can grasp with. So I gave him opposable thumbs and that sort of thing. And, and maybe this thing is, is omnivorous eating both plant and animal material and maybe it's a prey victim maybe it, it's uh it can become prey i should say and so i gave it this tail with this big club on the end of it that you know like the ankylosaurus that i think that's what the right name that that evolved uh during the dinosaur age that, that was able to defend itself so i just started giving it these traits but i started looking at you know i started looking at bone structure you know i always try to remember that um uh, anatomy and that sort of thing and and just how everything kind of flows into one another, you know, comparative anatomy and tried to apply it to this. And so this was a sketch that I came up with. And then I sat down, started rendering, and this was uh, what evolved out of that, no pun intended. Um, and I, you know, I started thinking about, okay, he lives just like, you know, zebras and tigers and, and that sort of thing. He lives in a grassy environment, a lot of verticals. Maybe he's evolved stripes to help him blend in and that sort of thing. Maybe he's grown these big uh, quills on the back of its head to to help protect it you know that's a vulnerable area if, if there is a predator that came after it that sort of thing and so i just had some fun with it and uh anyway that's my long-winded way of saying do your research ground your creatures in reality do your you know look at look at all the different things that have evolved on earth and when you design a, a creature, let's say it's for, you know, it's evolved on another planet or, or you're um, uh, creating an imaginary creature, think about how that creature has evolved and try to find something that's closely related to it that has happened here on Earth and, and, and see how it might compare and see how you can kind of pick and choose from all the different aspects of, of creatures from around our world and apply them to your own creature. Okay, so go out and... Apply some of that thinking and have some fun with it because this is one of my favorite things to do in the world. I feel like a little kid. You can just sit down and just kind of play God and create these fun uh, mythical creatures that that in another realm could be real. You never know. And it's and it's putting that research into it that, that pushes it into that reality. So go have some fun. Apply these ideas. And I'll talk to you next week. Thanks a lot. Bye.